this tutorial I'll show you how to create this bouncy letter animation I created for 36 days of type. At the end of the video I'll also talk you through how I use similar effects to create this set of bouncy numbers on springs. We'll be using squash and stretch deformer along with jiggle and bend deformers. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other posts of mine from Instagram that you'd like a tutorial on. Please remember to like and subscribe and you'll get notifications of when I upload new videos. Okay, let's get started. All right, let's just start by bringing in a cube. I'm going to make this 55 by 30 by 55. This is going to make the shape of our eye. Um, I'm going to up the segments on this because we want enough segments to be able to get that kind of smooth shape. So I'm going to up this quite high, 40 on the X, 300 on the Y and 40 on, oh, on the Z. Okay, uh, and then I'll add a fillet and I think I'll make this 5 or we'll add like 20 subdivisions. We've got lots of subdivisions. So there's our basic eye shape. Um, the next thing we'll do is make these bits that go on the top and the bottom and they're very simple so I'm not going to spend too long doing those. Let's just copy cube and let's just make it in high. I'm not going to do this exactly as I did in the original render just so that you can get an idea of what's how the actual effect works basically. Give this a little bit of like two and we'll add Another one on. No, I think I had circles. Add cylinder. Let's just get that down. And the Y. Maybe we'll get another one of those. Scale that down a bit. Something like that. We just. It was kind of. My initial idea was to make this into some sort of like mechanical press or something, but it's obviously an impossible machine because there's no, it's floating in space. Okay, so that's that basically done. Uh, I might just bring a little up a little. And then if we go in the side view, um, we'll grab rectangle. And I bring this down. This isn't exact, but let's say I've done this. Let's call it 65. We'll give that rounding. Actually, we'll give it a lot of rounding. Let's um up this at 100, and that if if you go above, then it'll kind of max out whatever the max it, it can do. And so if you can see, that's 32.5 for 65. I'm actually going to change the height on this back to 200 uh, so I can get this curve. I want it to kind of come out of here and go into this tube at the back. So let's make that editable. Go to point mode um, and let's um, on the spline, let's uncheck close spline and see that obviously we need to rotate this around. Another way of doing it is it actually set what the first and last point is. So let's, um, let's select this point. I'm going to go to mesh line. Then do set first point. See, now we've got the gap is there. Our gap is on the correct side. So I'm going to delete these two points. This point I'm going to move up. So that's our kind of top end of the tube. Add in a circle make this uh, 20 maybe. more than that 10 and we'll get a uh, sweep both of those in the sweep done that wrong the circle uh, probably need to change the plane from this ZY to there you go to XY and let's just bring that down so it's kind of intersecting this top section there's our kind of top section. Um, let's get a uh, we'll get a volume builder, a volume mesher. I'm just going to throw all of those into that. Make one object. Go you know, take the voxel size down to like one. Add a smooth layer. Make that one. Want more detail than that? Let's um. 
uh, iterations to one. Yeah, maybe this become 0.5. Uh, more than that. Okay. okay, there you go. I think that's a good sort of me happy medium. So that's our kind of like top part. What I might do is just add a little kind of ring on the back there just to give it a tiny bit more detail. So let's just get a, another cylinder. Bring that down. Bring it over here. Scale it up a little bit just so it looks like this has some kind of cap on it, I guess. I'm kind of going to eyeball this, zoom right in, that line is the central line, add that into our volume builder, make sure smoothing is at the top, brings it all together, to, not, it's kind of look, not looking exactly how I wanted to, so I'm just going to scale it up a little bit so we can refine it a little bit more, okay, okay. Right, so that is our top section, and then we're going to repeat that on the bottom. So it's going to be this press, so they or pull, so they bottom and the top pull this kind of rubbery, elasticy thing apart, and then they squish back down again. Um, save at this point. Pull this one over that. Um, you could save this as a separate version. I'm just going to, for the moment, make this. Volume mesher editable, pull that top. Okay. And I am going to zoom in a tiny bit. Down a dot. I just want it to kind of line up better. Go like that. Yep, so that's that. Uh, and then I'm going to copy that. And I'll call this one base. Flip that 180. And I want to move this through the Y again so that it's nearly touching. There you go. So there's our two parts. The rod at the back, um, I think I we kind of cheat it a little bit by just animating. Uh, animating the the length of it. That's the one bit that's a bit out of this. But let's just a moment. Let's just stick it in. Leave it there for now. It might be that when this, I know, because it's going to pull up. So yeah, we'll have to animate the length of it. So for the moment, I'll just leave it there. So at least we've got all our parts. Right. So the the bulk of this animation is done using the squash and stretch uh, deformer, which I don't use that often, but it's 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 quite fun when it's combined with some other um, deformers. So um, the first thing I do before I animate is I just want to change my scene settings. I should probably just do this at the start of every project, but let's, um, my daily render, I did it at 1000 by 1250, and we'll change the frame rate to 25 frames per second. Then under project settings, I'm going to change frames per second here to 25, and I'm going to be 100 frames because I wanted to make originally like a four second loop so let's just set that at 100 i'm going to change my camera as well because i like looking for a tele lens anyway because i feel like i can see better what's going on there you go okay so let's um add this uh squash and stretch so we're going to add that to the cube so put that within the cube and then um we're going to say fit to parent now you can't exactly see what's going on so i'm just going to move it out to the side and see you've got this a little crosshair at the top and a crosshair at the bottom. If you go into the squash and stretch, that's this top and bottom marker. So if I move this up, that goes up. And um, if I move this up and down, that goes up and down. So that's basically what's going to be affected by the squash and stretch. So if um, you wanted it to only stretch or squash from uh, further down or just in a bit in the middle, then you can kind of adjust these. But uh, for this, I want it to affect the whole thing. And what I'm going to do actually is, just so we can concentrate on getting this bit of animation done, I'm just going to hide everything else. And we're just looking at the cube, and I'll set this back to fit to parent, so that puts it basically in the middle. You can see the crosshairs sitting there. 
Right, so um, so the way this works is by using this um, factor. So if I change this factor, you can see it's stretching the object. And we've got this, uh, you know, it, it looks reasonably natural just as it is. Um, and you can see we could, you know, we could kind of get like a bounce if we and it keyframed it by hand, but keyframe by hand, take too long. So we've got tools that can help us do that. So let's set this animation up and have a look at some of these settings. Um, we go to frame five um, with the squash and stretch selected. Um, I am going to um, actually, before I set a keyframe, I'm actually going to change this expand factor. So you see here, like the more this expand goes up and down, the more kind of stretch we get to it. And for this, I want it to pull or look like it's pu pulling really tight. So. I changed this to about 200 in my uh, setting that I for my daily render that I did. Um, I'm going to set this to 100, uh, and then on frame five, I'm going to set uh, set a keyframe, uh, and then I'm going to go to frame 55, and I'm going to put this up to 200. Then another keyframe. Oh no, actually 180. I think is what I did. Yeah, so we're not going like super. We're not. If you go too high, then it just completely breaks it. But that depends on your expand. So you've got to kind of change and play around with these settings. And I'm going to go to frame uh, 68, and I'm going to set this back to 100. Okay. Um, now we go back to our stretched point. Now, you know, this is pulling directly into the center, which kind of looks pretty realistic. Um, I added in this, see this smooth start and smooth end. Now you up these, you see it kind of curves it in. It kind of gives it this hourglass kind of shape, which I kind of like. I like the fact that it kind of is keeping its shape closer to the bottom and it's just kind of taut in the middle. The only thing is though that I didn't quite like the bend, So, but you can actually change that curve um, uh, between this smooth start and smooth end and you can do it here under type so if I change this to spline now already you've got this nicer curve going on where it's just kind of got this easing spline but you which you can adjust you can um, grab these bezier handles and change this and shape it however you would like but I kind of like this just this ease in I think that looks nice for this we just play that back, we can see what that looks like. So it's pulling in and then it's uh, squashing back down again. But nothing else is happening. We haven't got that bounce that we want. Now before we put the bounce in, I'm actually going to animate the top and bottom parts as well because then we'll add the bounce to all of them because we want to make sure that all of these parts move together. Um, because on the other parts, obviously we're not using the uh, squash and stretch um, we're going to animate those bits by hand. So go back to frame five, our first frame. I'm going to select the top one under Y. I'm going to set a keyframe. We'll go to frame, what was it again? 55. I'll go into the side view. And we'll move this up. Kind of, kind of in the similar place. Another keyframe. Oh, that's on mine. That's we'll call that 52, I think. So I'm guessing for the bottom it'll be minus 52. So let's keyframe here on 55 by minus 52. Actually, yeah, okay. Actually, set that keyframe. And then on frame 68, so we're matching the same frames as the the main cube. We'll put this back to what it was. It was a awkward. It was this one, 0.438. So I'm just going to cop, copy that, paste that in, set that. This one, copy that. Frame 68. Is that set that okay? All right, so there's our top and bottom. If we play that back, they should all move together. Okay, and actually, maybe this would be a good time just to do that cylinder at the back. We'll just animate that. 
on frame five go to the cylinder was that um i think we'll change we'll change the height so if i set a keyframe for the height there and actually should have done this for the others we know at frame 68 we want to be back to this again so let's just set another keyframe it's just frame 55 that we actually want to change let's just up that height call it 210 we'll set a keyframe now we play that back zoom out a little bit yeah, we're pulling stretching coming back down again but obviously we haven't got that nice secondary animation and we do that using the uh, jiggle deformer um, and we can apply that to the squash and stretch as well as to the objects at the top and bottom let's do that let's bring in the jiggle so we go up here bring in the jiggle deformer and I'll just hide everything else again just concentrate on the cube in the middle bring that jiggle in underneath the squash and stretch that's there and if we just press play and see what that looks like it's running quite slow see why and it comes back down you see it's kind of got all these lines in it's trying to kind of got these wrinkles in it which could be nice I mean you could depending on how what object you're um, jiggling you know that might be something that you want but that's actually the structural that seems to be doing that so if we pull that structural right down and then replay it you'll see that it should give it a nice bounce and we've got that nice jiggle kind of jelliness to it um, the stiffness I'm going to turn that up a little bit 65 and the strength I'm just going to turn down just a tad I just want the the jiggle to kind of be end before frame 100 so when we loop then uh, we can go back to the uh, the initial state there you go so it's back to the, the original state okay so with that done let's um, bring in our top and base again and we should be able to apply that jiggle deformer make copies of it and apply it to the top and the base hopefully they should all have the same because they've got the same jiggle the same settings have the same bounce there you go so they're all bouncing together now so it's quite nice now one thing I might do is if I go into the uh, timeline and we'll look at the have a look we've got the squash and stretch here and we've got the top position and the base position just looking at these uh, lines what I want to do is actually kind of ease this in a little bit more so that it kind of starts moving slower and then I want this kind of bounce back this pullback to be a bit more sudden so I'm just gonna change some of these keyframe settings if I just select this first keyframe and uh, I actually I need to select that track first I'm just gonna set this to this kind of ease in ease out here it means it's editable I'll just select all of them editable what I'm going to do is uh, change the um, the timing on these slightly so I might just change this to something like minus 14 you need to actually do this for all of them because we want all of them to do it at the same time so we want to make sure that all of these are the same I select all three of these rather than being minus 5 I'm going to change this to something like minus 10 and see that gives us this kind of smoother ease here and then it gives us this sudden kind of ease off and sudden jolt back down with these ones they're what 3.2 i'll probably just change them to something like minus three we've got just this sudden jolt back down so let's see what that looks like pulling up slowly and then bang goes and then that gives us that nice little sort of squish out at the, at the end Next we're going to take a look at the materials and rather than going over all of the materials I just want to cover the uh, kind of jelly like material that's in the middle and how the lighting is used to affect that material so we're going to look at that next you can look at my other tutorials if you want to see how I do some other kind of simple colour and metal materials but for this one specifically I think it's that kind of jelly like material that most people are interested in okay so now we're at a point where I can just talk about this material okay so let's um 
uh, create a new specular material, drag that onto this cube, and go into the settings, all this um, jelly. Um, I just put the roughness up a little bit on this, maybe 0.1. Maybe that's affecting that already. The reflection, we don't want that much reflection. I'm just taking that right down to 0.3. All these settings kind of left the same. Um, and then under uh, medium, we want to add a option. Um, we're going to take this density right down to 10. Going to leave this volume step length at four. Then under absorption, we're going to add RGB spectrum. And I had this kind of purpley color, and I've written down the colors so 278, 89, 91. Okay, so that's basically the material, right? So it's pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. When you look at it like this, doesn't look like it's doing that much. It's affected a lot by the lighting. So if I turn these two lights on, these are two wide lights at the sides of the screen. Let me go into a... We've just got a, a square white light here and a square white light there. And you can see the, the light is, that absorption is allowing some of the light through, but not all of it. But we've got this whiteness to it. now. The only difference is we've got another light that is here, which is actually sitting behind the object. Turn that on, that brings in this pink. Put it in the center. That's what is actually giving us this other tone, this lightness. And what that is, is an octane light, but I've turned the temperature down. So the temperature is usually about six and a half thousand, I think. Um, if we turn this right down, it gets more and more red. Then we go more blue. We go the more we go up this way I've turned this right down and it's that red shining through when it's thin it's obviously it's just sitting right behind it and the way um, that you can't see that is if you see down here under the light in the light settings you've got opacity and you can actually turn that on or off so not like in the real world we can't do that but in 3d luckily we can make a light go invisible so that's that there um, so then when we see that at the beginning, see we kind of get this hint of that color, and then as we go through the animation, I have to let that play through, otherwise the jiggle won't work. As we pull through the animation, you can see it's letting more of that pink through until it gets super thin. We see quite a lot of it like that, and we get a touch of that white as well coming from the left and right. So that's basically how this was done. So. Just wanted to quickly show how I, I used the squ uh, sh uh, squash and stretch in another project, which is um, the uh, I did a one for when I made 30k 30k followers on Instagram. So I had these bouncing three zero and k. So I've just isolated one of them. We've got this bouncing going on, but it's actually super simple. So I'll just go back to frame one. And we've got this base. I mean, that is just an object. We can get rid of that. And this cylinder is just for show. Get rid of that. We've got this letter three, which is our number three, which is basically basically a volume builder, volume measure, a three with some lines running around it to kind of give it this ridging. And then inside that, we've got a helix uh, uh, with a circle running around it, you know, through a um, sweep. And then we've got a squash and stretch. I'll just turn these off. So we've got a squash and stretch, which is just uh, as high. These items are uh, parented to each other. And then they're in uh, like a another group. And then a squash and stretch. I've got a bend in there. So the squash and stretch will affect everything within this group. But see, I've made uh, the bottom I've set to zero because it's here. Uh, and the top I've set to 80. Um, so it's only affecting just uh, near the top of the spring. So all I'm going to be squashing see, is only it's moving everything above it up and down. But it's only actually squashing that spring. So all I'm doing is animating that spr spring up and down. Oh, that's where I've moved it. Do I put that back to center? So that's squashing it up and down. And then added on top of that, I have this bend. 
I've got a bend that is just covering the kind of spring section and you can see if I up this it's bending that spring I just want a two degree and then over time what I'm doing is rotating that around so it basically might you'll see it more obviously if I just up this strength you see it's kind of doing two things at once you've got the bend animation which is making sure that when it bounces up and down each time it's not it's not looking exactly the same it's looking a little bit different so rather than doing something with dynamics we're just using some simple deformers instead and then looping those so um that's basically that so i hope you found this useful um you kind of set this up in a different way this tutorial what just kind of uh wanted to get something out uh, for you guys to uh, try out and I uh, hope you found this useful and I will see you next time. Please stay safe. Bye.